Did you enjoy the spring breakout game? Pretty cool to get to see that many great prospects all in the same place, all at one time. Let's talk about it. Justin Robleski got the start for the Dodgers. I've been telling you about this young man for quite a while. Of course, I got to see him at Oklahoma State. He had to actually, his junior season there, cut it off short because of Tommy John. That's probably why, if you haven't heard a lot about him, that would be why, is because he went to Clemson, got to pitch quite a bit as a true freshman there in Clemson, but then he got hit by a car, and then so then he transferred to the State College of Florida at JUCO. There he broke his jaw and lost like 20 pounds, and because of that, his velo got down into the 80s. So then he transferred to Oklahoma State, gained all of that weight back, and really looked good. I've actually seen his TrackMan data. It is very impressive, so I knew a lot about this guy when the Dodgers got him. And then he was really coming on, had a good outing against Vanderbilt at OSU, and then had to shut things down halfway through his junior season there and have Tommy John surgery. So the Dodgers really just think about this. He threw a little bit as a true freshman, didn't get to pitch a whole lot in Juco because of the broke jaw, then only got to pitch a little bit his junior year at Oklahoma State. Similar to Michael Grove, they still took a chance on this guy because his stuff is big. I've talked about how big his stuff is, and they, they were not scared of the Tommy John situation for him. So they kind of put him on that leash. And then this last year, because of all those injuries that I just mentioned, being hit by the car, the broken jaw, and the Tommy John, this last year was his first full year as a professional. And, man, did he take off. He was probably – the most consistent starter for the Great Lakes Loons. He spent all of last year at the high A level with Great Lakes, and he was good from start to finish. He has the fastball slider cutter and change. He's actually added depth to that slider. The fastball that you're seeing right there can approach 100 miles an hour. It is high 90s, and it continues to climb. As I said, as I keep saying, this is a guy that is just getting further and further away from the Tommy John. Do not be surprised if Justin Robleski hits triple digits at some time in his career. His fastball is that big. I've said it between the three starters, of course, Ronan Kopp. He ended up in, in relief this last year for Great Lakes. But between those three, Robleski is probably the most major league ready between him, Maddox Bruns, and Ronan Kopp, just simply because his stuff is refined and it's just as big as any other lefties in the game. So, Super excited about Justin Robleski. Super excited about the performance he put on last night. So I hope you enjoyed watching him in the breakout game. I think he probably, of course, he spent all last year with the high A Great Lakes Loons. I think this year in 2024 he will break with the AA Tulsa Drillers. And I'm really hoping that sometime around June, probably not that soon, but I'm hoping it's that soon, July, August, something like that. He gets moved then to Triple A Oklahoma City and then starts knocking on the door of the major leagues. We're going to stick with pitching in the next pitcher we're going to talk about. Also, another highly ranked lefty for the Dodgers, and that would be Jackson Ferris. So, hey, Justin Robleski is a guy that I've known from Oklahoma State, a guy that I know a lot about the ins and outs and details to the almost opposite spectrum. Not going to lie, this is the first time. I, in a live setting, have actually watched Jackson Ferris pitch. I've seen some videos on him on the internet. I've seen this and that, and really, to be honest with you, not very many of them. So my knowledge of Jackson Ferris is very, very, very limited. I'm going to give you what I saw yesterday, some of the takeaways I had from him. I thought he was very impressive, as we have been told as far as, you know, he came over in the Michael Bush trade and some of his stuff and, and just his offerings we've been told are very, very, very impressive. And I think that shows, look at that big breaking ball right there. With his high ranking immediately when he came to the Dodgers, he was a top 20 prospect. So from what I see is whenever he lands with his foot right there, see how his, land, his foot lands to the first base side? That's going to create crossfire. So this ball to a lefty is going to start behind a lefty. That's going to create sweep and a right turn to that fastball. So let me let me actually slow this down and get you in halftime speed here, so you can talk. You can see what I'm talking about with that fastball. Watch this fastball just kind of cut across the zone naturally because it comes from a crossfire position. See that? Let me back that up just a touch and show you where it starts and then where it finishes. So right 
here. It comes out of his hand right there. Okay, his fastball is right there, and it's going to end up right here. And that's not anything that he's trying to do. It just happens. See how that cuts to the inner half? That just happens because it's called crossfire. When you land to the first base side, you're kind of throwing across your body. You get that natural cut. So that was the first thing I really noticed about Jackson Ferris was that he does crossfire. That's going to be very tough for lefties. And then that fastball right there is very, very, very big. And then I noticed that his off-speed stuff seemed to have really, really good sweep to it, a really nice right turn. And that's exciting because that big sweeper, that kind of sweeping breaking ball is going to get to the back foot of a right-hander and also just be devastating, or at least it should be to lefties right there, that little sweeper there. That's a nice pitch sweeping away. I just don't imagine. Let me back that up and, and put it again in half speed here so you can just kind of see the sweep of this breaking ball here from Jackson Ferris right here. Watch how that ball sweeps. Boom. That is a nice pitch breaking. And that lefty's like, I can't hit that pitch. The only thing he can do is go to left field with it. So if he can continue to throw like that and stay in the zone, there is the big sweeper. You just saw. Let's back that up and watch this big sweeper. Let's see where it comes out of. Here, right there. Okay, see, that's where this lefty is picking this ball up from. This is way behind them and pretty much above the left-hander's head. And then look where it finishes. Boom. On the outer half. Let me back that up just a touch and show you exactly where this lands in the zone right there. It went all the way to the outside corner of the zone. That's how big Jackson Ferris's stuff sweeps. It's a matter of keeping in the zone. But from what we saw yesterday, that sweeping slider, the crossfire, looked very good. So this is six foot seven Jared Karros. Of course, he is the son of Eric Karros. You see him when you're six foot seven, let me back that up, and you're able to throw to the top of the zone like that. It's just impossible for, especially with these modern day swings that have lift in them, to stay above that baseball or even in the middle of that baseball and put any contact to it. So you're going to see a lot of pop-ups, a lot of swing and miss with that big fastball to the top of the zone. It's 92 to 94, so it's not like it's a million miles an hour. But when you're that tall, again, the carry of it makes it very, very, very difficult for the hitter. Look, you right here, that little, there's the fastball again to the top of the zone, outer half. Here's that little cutter right there. See that nice pitch? See that tunnel that it comes out of? That is a really, really nice pitch off of that, off of that fastball that he throws at the top of the zone. Let's watch right here. The tunnel right there as it comes out. Looks like it's going to be on the inner half to the righty and then ends up on the outer half and the righty swings around that. So that little cutter pitch was a good pitch for Jared Karros. All out of the 6-7 frame. And the thing about him is he knows how to sequence. He knows how to execute. He knows how to mix his pitches together. And he knows the hitters and how to execute the types of sequences that will beat each and every hitter. He's very advanced in those aspects of pitching. So Jared Karros, there's a lot to like there. Patrick Copen was drafted this last summer. And I honestly, like Jackson Ferris, I had never seen him pitch live and had seen very, very, very limited video. I did write a feature on him. I did do an interview where we talked about all of his stuff. So if you want to go check that out, Check it out on DodgersDaily.net. But the first couple of things that I noticed about Copen was, one, that he cut his hair. He had long hair at West Virginia. And so I was like, wow, is that actually Patrick Copen? Because it didn't necessarily look like him. And then, two, man, his legs and his lower half, he has really, really, really filled out. And the good thing about him, the Dodgers love this, the long size, six foot six, and then he's a tremendous athlete. He's a guy that another one of those pitchers in the Dodgers organization that is a good enough athlete, athlete where he can dunk. He's dunked in basketball games many, many different times. He's come up with clutch baskets in basketball on the hardwood. So the Dodgers love those types of guys that are multiple sport guys that have known to be coming through in every different sport. Let me watch this again for Patrick Copen. And he is another one of those guys that when they drafted him, it's all about development and upside because with his frame, you knew that he's probably going to approach 100 miles an hour. And he has the ability to have a mix that would be very, very, very good. So this is a guy that can throw a fastball, a guy that can throw a slider, and a guy that's going to get into the system. Probably start, I would say, at Rancho. Maybe finish this season. Look at that fastball inside. At the high A level at Great Lakes. And just continue 
to develop and get better and better and better as he goes on. So his fastball has reached as high as 97. It has natural cut and ride that you see here. Cut meaning it turns left a little bit. Ride meaning it carries the zone. So to a hitter, it looks like it's going to drop, but it doesn't. So he has good cut and ride on his fastball. He had 83 strikeouts and 72.2 innings at Marshall, I should say. If I said West Virginia earlier, it's because Marshall is in West Virginia. Between that and his natural ability to make the ball turn left, we talked about that with his cut. That's why scouts love the potential that especially Dodgers scouts, and he was drafted in the seventh round of last summer's draft. Patrick Copen, maybe the most impressive pitcher in terms of, hey, who's this guy? And then he comes out and you go, holy smokes, look at him. Edgardo Enriquez. How about that big four seam and that nasty changeup that you just saw right there? And then that just really, really, really nasty slider. That fastball at the top of the zone, that is, has a lot of carry. I don't know his exact velo from yesterday, but I can tell you that there's that changeup. That fastball had a lot of carry to it, which means it has RPMs and a lot of spin rate, and then there is that slider. Wow, look at that pitch. That is a devastating pitch, and that fastball to pair with it at the top of the zone. So when you're able to throw that fastball at the top of the zone, then start your slider at the exact same location, but then tumble it all the way into the dirt, and you're able to do it. Look how fast. I mean, that's getting right by a really good pro. I don't know the name of the prospect here, but you know they're good because they're in this game, and that prospect just had no chance for the Angels there. In Garda, Edgardo Enriquez, very, very, very impressive performance for him. He was in Rancho last year. Austin's going to have a good time watching him this year at the high A level with Great Lakes, Edgardo Enriquez. My man, Kenny George, you're seeing right here. Hey, this is the type of player that the Dodgers need. They need a guy... 80 grade speed, no doubt about that. And a guy that'll just do that right there. Hey, just stay on the ball, put it in play, and run like hell, like that, right there, like Kenny George does. Elite speed, no doubt about it. Of course, he was the Dodgers' number one pick. Here, you're going to see his speed right here. Watch this, just cruising. I mean, doesn't even really have to kick it in gear. He's probably about 70% right there. And then he can just flatten his swing and hit one into right center and run like crazy. Hey, he stole home. To win a game last summer for the Rancho Cucamonga Quakes. There he is, Kenny, right there with an easy triple. And the thing about him is, after they drafted him out of high school, out of Casita High School in the in the Galveston area, which is south of Houston, about 45 minutes, something like that. Look at that young man run right there. Go, my man. Right there, Kenny George. That dude can pick him up and put him down. But he played it at Casita High School. It's like a family to him. That whole community down there is and so he came into the Dodgers last summer with only high school experience but at Casita, that area of the world friends world where Lyle Lockhart Jr. came from League City where Braden Fisher came from elite high school baseball and then he played in all the prospect camps and he played on Team USA 18U as well so although he had just high school experience it was very elite high school experience but the Dodgers still they, they were going to take him to the complex. They just figured that he would stay at the complex, have his instructs after the complex season, and then move into the offseason, probably start him with Rancho in 2024. But when he got to the complex, Kendall George we're talking about right here, as you see that elite speed in action in the game yesterday, he hit so well at the complex, the Dodgers were like, you know what, we can't hold this guy down. They sent him to Rancho because he was doing so well, even though they had planned not to. Look at that young man run right there. And he went to Rancho and just tore it up for the Quakes. He was a shot of energy for that club. So Kenny George, the Dodgers' number one draft pick from last summer, showing it off yesterday. How about the sweet swing of Josue De Paula? I say it every time I talk about him. Bernie Williams is who I see all over again. A young man that is a great hitter first. We saw the home run in spring training. There he is. You can tell he plays the game with a lot of what I call swag and even more confidence, and he just really, really enjoys playing the game of baseball, and man, can he hit. What I really like about Josue De Paula, you're seeing right here, there you're seeing him run. I know the one knock on him is, is he going to be able to run well enough to play the outfield? Well, there he is running. You be the judge right there. 
Big old tall, long frame, and you know the Dodgers are just going to continue to improve his athletic ability. But right there, he does stuff like that over and over and over, is that he sells out to being a great hitter. We're going to get to Zaire Hope here in a minute. But you have Kenny George, who we mentioned has built his game around speed and just putting the ball in play and running. You have Josue De Paula that stays inside the baseball and concentrates on being a great hitter and is not worried about hitting home runs. And then you also have Zaire Hope, all at the lower levels of your minor leagues. All guys that are concentrating on being great hitters first. That's the most exciting thing to me about Josue De Paula is that he squarely has become a great hitter first. The power in that frame you know will eventually come. Now, will it be 35 to 40 home runs a year? Probably not. You're probably not going to go from two home runs at the single-A level to being a 35 home run type of guy at the major league level. But if a guy like that can hit 310, 320, something like that at the major league level with that sweet left-handed swing, hit the ball where it's pitched, let the ball get deep, and hit, say, 10 to 15 home runs, that's a really, really, really nice player. So, Josue De Paula uh, doing what he always does and just putting that sweet swing on display. So, Dodgers fans are thirsty for more content on the Dodgers' number one prospect, Dalton Rushing. Make no mistake about it. We just mentioned with Josue De Paula how Josue sells out to being a great hitter first. Dalton Rushing is that. Don't look at stats last year for one. The Midwest League It is one of the toughest leagues in the world to hit in because, simply put, it's really cold for probably more than half of the season, and it's hard to hit those types of pitchers and the type of pitching that league has when it's really cold. So Dalton rushing, although the stats didn't look just phenomenal last year, they really were fairly close to league average, and also he was dealing with the concussion protocol and all those kinds of things. And I'll tell you what. The guy has massive power. He has elite play discipline. It's like Will Smith all over again. And as a matter of fact, if you look at Will Smith's minor league numbers, he had seasons that were just identical to what Dalton Rushing did this past season. But whenever you kind of compare the two, the biggest comparison is the massive amount of power. Both of those guys, Will Smith, Dalton Rushing, just massively strong. When they hit the ball, it just sounds different. I promise you that. And then the elite plate discipline, hey, that continues to play as you move levels. So one of the things that gets guys is that, yeah, they might be a great hitter, but they chase the zone or they don't have great plate discipline. As you move up levels, that plate discipline, being able to make correct swing decisions, swing at the right pitches, that becomes like almost the number one indicator as to whether or not you're going to be able to continue to advance because if you will chase certain pitches, if you swing at the wrong pitches, as you go up levels, pitchers will be able to execute to that scouting report and they will be able to actually throw the types of pitches that you don't lay off of and you're going to end up striking out a lot. Dalton Rushing is not in that boat. That's why I'm super excited. Well, not why. One of the reasons why, and I'll tell you what, nobody has more power than Dalton Rushing. And between all of that and his defensive skills, I've showed you a couple of different times I'm throwing runners out from his knees. He is one of the hardest workers on the team. He he conducts all the pitchers' meetings. He knows more about the opposing hitters than they know about themselves. But you put all that together, probably his biggest quality, Austin Brubaker, my co-host, will attest to this, when it matters the most, that that is when Dalton Rushing is at his best. This dude is absolutely clutch. He comes through in the biggest moments of which, hey, when you're a Dodgers fan, it's all about winning the World Series, right? So having guys that know how to produce when the lights shine bright, that is invaluable. It's also Dalton Rushing. Also, I wouldn't want to be a scoreboard located in right center because you are not safe. Okay, my man Tyrone Lorenzo, WRC Plus of 155. He had an ISO, which was higher than his strikeout percentage. And as Austin Brubaker talks about a lot, guys that post WRC Plus of 150 or above at least one time in their career have about a 75% chance of making the major leagues. So how about his defense? Sub 1-8 pop time in a game. I have been... I have been preaching about this guy, how he is going to be a rock star. Let's watch a swing there. Robinson Cano. That was his idol growing up. 
That's who he wanted to be. That's who he patterned his swing after. I also see a little bit of Juan Soto in that swing as well. So if it just looks like Robinson Cano to you, that's because that's who he wanted to be. That is Tyrone Moranzo's idol. And this young man, hey, I have an interview with him. I have a feature article with him on my on the YouTube and then also on DodgersDaily.net. Go check that out. Wonderful young man. Want to thank Trinidad Loiza again for on that interview translating it. Tyrone Lorenzo is just a wonderful, wonderful young man who improved immensely last year on defense, has the big power, has great plate discipline, another young catcher that has great plate discipline. He is a switch hitter. He feels more comfortable from the left side through his own words. He said, well, that's simply because you see more right-handers, so you get to hit left-handed more. I love this young man. Watch out for Tyrone Lorenzo. He spent all the last year at the single-A level at Rancho Cucamonga. Austin, I'm jealous of you. You're going to get to see him at the high-A Great Lakes level this year with the Loons, Tyrone Lorenzo. So, Zaire Hope is another one of those guys that came over in the Michael Bush trade with Jackson Ferris. First thing I wanted to make note of here, I have not seen any video of him other than, like, the people in the stands taking video from their own camera and putting it on YouTube. But look at his trunks, man. This dude is just absolutely low center to the ground and just loaded with strength on the lower half of his body, which when you take his core and the lower half, that's where most of your strength is going to come from. Anyways, and so what I want you to notice, I'm actually going to I'm going to slow this down if I can't right here. Playback speed, I'm going to go at a half time. Now watch this, and, and the reason why, because he's so strong, watch how simple his movements are. I mean, just pick the foot up, put it down, and go straight to the ball. And although those are very simple, because he is so strong, he's still able to generate a world of power. When you're able, because you're so strong, to be that simple, I know he didn't just knock that one to the moon. He kind of got that one in on the hands. But I've seen him hit home runs, and I can tell you he can hit tanks. When you are able to be that simple with your movements and your swing, but yet generate that much power, that's the type of setup with Zaire Hope just – projecting and looking at it from a scouting aspect that should allow a guy there's a Koye Dixon by the way big O what a wonderful young man great player he was in the Dodgers system whenever you were able to have that simple of movements and yet create that much power that should be a guy see how he's in the middle of that ball that should be able to have some consistency as well as power so I liked what I saw with Zaire Hope yesterday I mentioned it a couple of times I know that they're a little bit on different tracks. They've been in the system for a little bit longer times. But how fun would it be to watch Zaire Hope? By the way, Zaire pitched some in high school, so it'd be interesting to see if the Dodgers decide to make him 2A at all. I don't think they would, but how about if you had Zaire Hope, Kenny George, and Josue De Paula in the same outfield together and you move them all up together and let them play all together all throughout their professional careers? That would be a lot of fun. I think that would be – uh, that would be really cool and something that, that would really create a lot of chemistry between them. And by the time they got up to the Dodgers, would make for a situation to where you had an elite outfield. Alexander Albertus, a, the Dodgers a couple of years ago, they made a real commitment to draft a ton of shortstops. We've already talked about Alex Freeland many different times, Wilman Diaz, Rain Doncon, Donkey, who just got traded a minute ago. And all these guys, Jordan Thompson, Sam Mongelli can play shortstop. Emil Morales, who just got signed in the international draft period this last year out of the DR. And then here is Alexander Albertus, a young man from Aruba. How about that? From Aruba, Alexander Albertus. And watch this. Plays with a big smile on his face. And he is just so excited to have the opportunity that he has been given here and getting to play. He actually made it stateside last year. There's Jesus Calis, by the way, traveling into third base. Jesus Calis, another catcher in the organization. That is really good. But Albertus, he made it stateside last year, got to play at the complex, likely will start at the high A level, excuse me, at the single A level Rancho Cucamonga this year. So excited to watch the process of Alexander Albertus Lots and lots of really nice shortstop prospects in the system at the lower levels of the minor leagues. So those weren't all the, the only guys that were actually on the roster for this game. Alec Gambo was on the roster as well. Yoel Ibata 
was on the roster. Ronan Cop, we didn't get to see him. Juan Mario, we've gotten to see quite a bit. Rush that 100 mile hour fastball up to home plate in spring training. John Rooney, which, hey, John Rooney out of Gamboa, they're 27 years old. They don't need to be in this game. They need to be fighting for a roster spot with the big club. We got to see Robo. Catchers also, you didn't get to see Yaner Fernandez. You got to see Jesus Galis run there, but you didn't get to see him hit. You got to see Lorenzo and rushing. Infielders, you got to see Albertus. You got to see a little bit of Alex Freeland. Noah Miller didn't get a chance to see him. You got to see a little bit of Austin Gothier play some defense. You got to see Jake Geloff having at bat and Trey Sweeney as well. And then Jose de Paula, Kendall George, Zaire Hope. You got to see Damon Keith having at bat. Samuel Munoz, you actually got to see him as well. And Jose Ramos, you didn't get to see. Of course, Ramos has had the really, really, really nice spring for the Dodgers. Got a lot of early playing time in spring training. It definitely took advantage of that. So, hey, the thing about this game is when I initially look at these rosters, my first response is, well, where in the hell is Braden Fisher? Where's Antonio Knowles? Where? And it's like, golly, man, it, it frustrates me because, you know, where's Jack Dreyer? Where, where is all these guys? But, but you got to realize you can't. What they're trying to do is they're trying to get from, you know, hey, maybe the guys that are really close to the major leagues, like Rooney and Gamboa, all the way down to the highest ranked prospects at the lower levels. And they're trying to mix them all together to get a really cool mix of prospects. So that's a really cool idea to do. It was fun to watch, and it's great for the guys to get to pitch in the game, in the breakout game. A guy like Justin Robleski, a guy like Kenny George, a guy like Tyrone Lorenzo, Alexander Albertus, Edgardo Enriquez. It is invaluable to those guys, so that is super exciting. But there are a lot, a lot, a lot of other prospects in this system that weren't in this game because you can't send everybody up there. It's one nine-inning game. There's a lot of other guys that we have a lot of coverage on here at Dodgers Daily as well, like a Braden Fisher, like a Ryan Sublette, like a Jake Filarski, like an Antonio Knowles, like a Jack Dreyer, you know, like guys like that. That Ben Harris type of guys type uh, type guys like that that are Ricky Venasco, Kevin Gowdy. There's guys up and down the system, uh, Brandon Lewis and, and all of those uh, Cody Hosey, all those types of guys that are up and down lineup again that could have been in this game. But those are the guys they chose, and great for them. And it was a lot of fun to watch. So I hope you enjoyed the show today. Hope you tune in next time, which will be tonight, where Coach Holt and I we bring you Dodgers dogs. Uh, hopefully we talk about a second big Dodgers victory in the Soul Series. And then the Dodgers, that's the last exhibition. And then it plays for real. So thank you for tuning in and go Dodgers.